This is the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Welcome inside the Red Zone as we kick off our sixth season. Glad to have you along for the ride. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez. I'm fired up. I know you're fired up. Let's get this thing going. Yeah, it's an exciting time of year. It's uh, Boys are putting in a lot of hard work, and we're excited to get rolling. We're going to break down this entire UNLV roster for you to get you ready for the season. But first, we're going to take a closer look at the games and dates for this season's schedule. It all starts this Saturday afternoon at the famed Coliseum as the Rebels battle with the Trojans. With Sam Darnold gone to the NFL, USC will have a quarterback starting under center for the first time in this game. It's a great way to kick off the season. The home opener is September 8th as Texas El Paso comes to Sam Boyd Stadium. UTEP is coming off an 0-12 season and has an entirely new coaching staff that is overhauling the program. The following Saturday, the Rebels host Prairie View A&M. The Panthers also have a new head coach, and any inkling to circle this as an automatic win just needs a reminder of Howard last season. The final non-conference game is on the road at Arkansas State. The Red Wolves are favored to win the Sun Belt, have a loaded offense, and have a lot of experts saying this is a non-Power 5 team to keep an eye on this year. It will be a stiff test for UNLV. After a bye week, the Rebs open the Mountain West schedule at home against New Mexico on October 6th. They'll hit the road the following week to play Utah State in Logan, followed by a home game on the 19th against Air Force and another roadie at San Jose State on the 27th. When the calendar flips to November, things get real interesting as UNLV plays its fellow West Division opponents in the last month. That starts with defending champ Fresno State at Sam Boyd on November 3rd. Then it's back-to-back -back roadies, first at San Diego State, then at Hawaii as UNLV looks to show Ninth Island supremacy. The regular season wraps up with the battle for the Fremont Cannon, November 24th, the Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, as UNR rolls into town to renew the rivalry. Will there be another game in December? That's the goal, but it starts with getting the six wins first, then trying to go for more. We're going to get to USC in just a moment, but let's just start with the season as a whole. It's a very compartmentalized schedule. Do you like the way it sets up? Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, it's kind of very orderly. You know, you've got all your non-conference games, then you have a bye week, you know, that separates that. And then you get into all your Mountain Division games, and then it goes right into the West. So it's not bad. I mean, I think it sets up pretty nice, and, uh, you know, we're excited about it, and uh, we'll see how it all turns out. It all starts with USC on Saturday. As of right now, they have not named a starting quarterback, but one thing we do know, Whoever starts, it's going to be their first start as a college quarterback. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of preparing, not knowing who of the three they're going to go with? You know, we've talked about a lot of the staff, too. The one thing about USC is that they recruit at such an elite level. I mean, they're always a top 10 recruiting class nationally. So all three of those guys are very highly sought after guys. If it is a freshman, there is a learning curve. Um, he's a very talented young man, and, uh, and that's why he's at SC. So, uh, but I do think you can kind of, you know, get after him a little bit, and we've got to create some pressures. The other guys, a little bit more experienced, uh, but don't have a lot of game starts and a lot of game playing Time. So for wh whoever it is, it'll be a talented guy, and we got to do a good job of just kind of rattling them. Creating chaos at the line of scrimmage, I think, is going to be a key with a, a quarterback who's maybe going to have a little bit of nerves coming into the first game. Yeah, and, and it kind of plays into what we've talked about all offseason. We know that one of the things that got in the way of us having a lot of success last year was our inability to, you know, get after the quarterback, create pressures and sacks and turnovers and such. So if we can do that, something we've talked about all offseason, I think it gives us an opportunity. Obviously, they have a lot of talent on this roster, uh, both sides of the ball. What are some of the, the keys that you guys have to focus on in order to be successful? Well, you know, I mean, I think it's in any game, your greatest opponent is yourself. If we go out there and we do a really good job at that quarterback spot, making good decisions, delivering balls, um, runs after the catch, continuing to run the football the way we have in the past, I think offensively we'll be okay. Defensively, against an elite team like that, tackling in space is a must. I mean, they're going to get the ball in space with some pretty athletic guys. We've got to be able to bring them down. So if we can do that, and again, disrupt that offensive line, which will disrupt that quarterback. That'll help us. And I think one of the things you'll see now, too, is as we move forward into year four, the way we've recruited, you know, the, the depth that we have, special teams, I think we're going to be a lot more solid. Now, we're going to be challenged in this game, probably like we won't be the rest of the year when it comes to athletes that we're going against. But, but I feel we're more than equipped to do it. Let's uh, start taking a little closer look at the team this season. We're going to start on the defensive side of the ball. There's no doubt there have been issues in that area over the last decade, but UNLV brought in a new coordinator to help turn things around.
there's a new skipper on the defensive side of the ball this season. Tim Skipper takes over the coordinating duties after three seasons at Florida, and he says the fans will notice a difference. Playing defense is all about attitude, attitude and effort. You have to change your mindset. So that's pretty much what we're trying to do is just be an aggressive, aggressive, aggressive attacking defense. Talk that way, rep at practice that way. When you're on the sideline, attack it. You know, mental reps from the sideline. Just everything's got to be attack, aggression, 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 and then the luck starts to happen for you. UNLV has struggled defensively for a long time, especially in the defensive backfield. But fresh faces and new schemes has Skipper believing they'll lock things down better. And we'll mix it up, you know, we'll have different packages of different guys. It might be times we have five, six DBs out there on the field, just depending on how who we're playing and the scheme we need to run. But I like what we have. We got some guys with some real good size. We got some guys that can really run. Um, playing DB, you have to have a short-term memory. To get ready, the Rebels have been going first team versus first team. And Skipper says that from the defensive standpoint, there isn't better preparation. But it's a lot of good on good. That's what we kind of think of ourselves as. It's good on good when it's ones on ones and the best twos on twos. You know, you're always competing and trying to get that done. Our offense has a lot of playmakers, so it's very good competition for us. Coming from Florida, Skipper could have landed in a lot of other programs, but UNLV is where he wanted to be. First thing is Coach Sanchez, I believe in what he's building here. Um, good friend of mine before we worked together, but always talked about working together. Finally had the opportunity to do that and just fire it up to be here. Secondly, I just, I love Vegas. I love the community. I love that you, there's something to do all the time. It's a good place to be. I'm excited for it. Love challenges, and this is a great challenge for me, so I'm happy to be here. So let's talk a little bit about this unit. What makes you think that this is a group that's ready to turn the corner in terms of the type of production that we're going to see on the field? Well, I think there's a couple of variables. Number one, Coach Skip, you know, he's done a really good job of messaging, just creating a sense of energy, doing, you know, making sure the guys aren't doing so much thinking. I mean, it's a complicated game. You're going to have to do some of that, but making sure they can play fast, right? And, and, and some of that's just taking a little bit out, you know, of a game plan. But a lot of it, too, is just experience, you know. One of the reasons I think we've struggled in the past, too, is we played so many young guys at pivotal roles. So when you look at guys like Bailey Loalangi and Gabe McCoy and, um, you know, those guys coming back, you know, Jaquez Khalili, and you look at Jericho Flowers, and a lot of these guys have a ton of reps under their belt, and, and now they're more mature. They've been through the ringer a little bit, had multiple years of experience. Javen White's another one. Um, these guys are older. They're more mature. They're ready to go. And, and a lot of those guys I named are just going into their junior season, so they got thrown into the fire really fast. So I think the experience, the depth, the, the coaching and the approach, all those things together I think are going to give us an opportunity to be successful. You lost Mike Hughes to graduation. Yep. Nick Dadashian was supposed to be a player that was going to come in and kind of fill a little bit of that role. He gets hurt and, and is out for the year. Is the depth there uh, on the line part that you guys are going to be able to still be aggressive and be able to roll guys in as you want to. Yeah, you know, the biggest loss with uh, with Dadashian is depth of that DN spot. Jameer Altsy has had a phenomenal offseason in camp. He's going to be just fine. Roger Mann, I mean, really, those three guys are going to kind of be a rotating deal. Um, we've got some younger guys now. The, the, the biggest difference is, you know, a year or two ago, you lose a guy and you're like, you're really scratching your head. But we've got guys, you know, Rodney Jones. Um, we've got Holloway out there, too. Uh, we've got Nate Neal. We've got some guys that have done a really, really good job. Malcolm Johnson is a freshman. I think you're going to see all those guys play. And the area that I'm really excited about is our defensive tackle group. I mean, I think it's the deepest group that we've had. We've got six guys that can legitimately come in and play ball. You know, Wiley obviously is the one senior. And, you know, him with um, Kolo Yusike, those guys coming back with, with a bunch of the guys we brought in. I think we're at a better place depth-wise. Dadashi and Hurst, and there's no doubt about it. You know, it's hard to replace some of those great guys like Hughes, but I really think we're in a good situation depth-wise. Well, we're uh, just getting started here inside the Reb Zone. Coming up, we sit down with senior running back Lexington Thomas to talk about his time at UNLV, how he wants to finish, and his brief stint as a weatherman. We're back in just two minutes as the Red Zone rolls off. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. The Rebels bring back a lot of offensive firepower this season that expect to score. The receivers will bring the thunder, but the talented group of running backs will certainly be bringing the lightning. To be a great running back, you need speed, shiftiness, and grit. 
That's a perfect description of Lexington Thomas. The senior, who has totaled 2,484 yards in his career, is just 1,250 yards away from breaking UNLV's career rushing record, held by former Rebel great and fellow Houston native Tim Cornette. How important is it for you to break that record? As long as the team win, if I break the record and we winning, it's, that's great. I don't care if I break the record and we don't go to a bowl game. That team first, win first attitude has won over fans, coaches, and his teammates who voted him an offensive captain this season. He's chopping at the bit to get things rolling. We can be great, we just stay focused. We have all the tools from quarterback to center to all the all the all linemen, to our receivers, tight ends, we have all the tools to have one of the best offense in the country. To appreciate the player, you need to appreciate the person. Thomas was a late qualifier out of Texas and admitted that he needed to be put on the right path. UNLV changed his life. UNLV taught me like the right and wrongs and stuff and my discipline and this is UNLV and the coaching staff and all my team has helped me grow like just grow as a human being other than a football player. And while he'll always have a soft spot for UNLV, mom still ranks number one. You're a mama's boy? Yeah, I love my mama. <laughs> Listed at 5'9 and 170 pounds, Thomas has heard all the size comments his entire life, but that's driven him to work harder. People size, the best player, the best players in the world, any sport, not all six foot, not all 300 pounds. That's what I'm saying. It's I, I, I like I like when people say stuff like that because it just feeds me. So just keep telling me it. So it's gonna make me do better. Better is what he's been every year and his quickness earned him his nickname, dubbed by the Hawaiian announcers from a game on Oahu two years ago. Who has it take on it? A fourth and 20, inside the 10. Wow, 34 yards of lightning. Lightning took off. It became his Twitter handle and even led to a promotional spot done with Fox 5 chief meteorologist, Ted Pretty. What do you think the weather's gonna be like tonight? Lightning. What about tomorrow? Still lightning. It was awesome. It was a great experience. UNLV is hoping lightning strikes multiple times this season. A winning season, a bowl game, and perhaps a rushing record. It's all hopefully part of the final collegiate chapter of an incredible story. A story where Thomas says the ending he envisioned as a freshman is being part of a group that turned around UNLV football. I just want to I just want to help the city out and the, the program out. It's like when Coach Sanders recruited me, he told us we're gonna get this going the right way. It starts with us. I'm never gonna forget. I'm never gonna forget that because it, it did start with us. This is this is the seniors, like the true seniors last year here, and um, they'd be our first year, his first graduating class, his first class to leave. I mean that means a lot to him. That means a lot to us because we like I said we're never gonna be here again. We're never gonna play for UNLV again. So I want to keep moving up on the pedestal. I want to keep everybody. People know about UNLV. UNLV a little bit right now. I need them up bottom a lot. He mentioned the first graduating class of your recruiting class uh, that you came in, and, and yeah. he obviously uh, has performed. Uh, a lot of them have, but. He's a special guy. He is, you know. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you wait to the end of the year to think about it, but it's going to be sad to lose some of these guys. I mean, we, we, we had a vision when we got here, things that we wanted to accomplish, and, you know, I mean, and it takes time to, to build the program the way you want it, to, to, to have it come forward in, in a lot of different ways. Our guys have done such a good job of, of playing better football, doing a great job in the classroom, doing all the things you need to do to sustain a program, and, and Lexington's a great example of it. So I absolutely love him and all those guys, and uh, it's um, – we're on a mission this year. We're going to go ahead and we're, we're, going to, we're going to rubber stamp this thing. That group of running backs, you know, Lex gets a lot of the headlines because he's yeah. on the field a lot, but they push each other. They're, they're such a good group of players that you could put in if, if anything happens or if you need to give a guy a rest. Uh, they actually are pushing each other and has led to a lot of his success. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's a really, really talented group. You know, you have three seniors in the group with Evan Owens and, you know, Xavier Campbell. Xavier's another Houston guy, too, and then Charles Williams, and Charles booked the freshman rushing record when he, you know, when, you know, when he first started. So it's as talented of a group as there is in the Mountain West. And, you know, the great thing is the way they love each other, they, they care about each other, they push each other, you know, hold each other accountable, and it makes the entire group better. How important is it to have somebody who's respected like Lexington that the other coaches know they have to plan for 
but then you also have a, a dual threat quarterback and yeah. you have talented wide receivers. How much does that open up the offense uh, to what you guys can do in a game? Well, you know, it, at times you've seen it early. You know, last year, obviously, we had to develop Armani throughout the season, throwing the ball and stuff. We like where he's at now. There's been other times where, you know, I remember our first year there, you know, with, with Decker, he, you know, he was more of a throw guy. We had a tough time, you know, early on being real physical. Now I think we're pretty balanced. I mean, when you look at the group of receivers out there, you look at the stable of backs, and then obviously Armani is kind of the X factor in the whole thing. You're going to have to defend the entire field. You can't just load the box because we got playmakers on the outside now. You're going to have to play as true. So, you know, that bodes well for us. As long as we execute at a high level, we can score a lot of points. Well, time for us to take another short break. But when we come back, we mic'd up Coach Sanchez during a recent practice. Hear the sounds of the Rebels getting ready for the season. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. There's nothing better for a football fan than being right in the middle of the action. And with that in mind, we mic'd up Tony Sanchez for some sounds of the game. Beautiful morning. Do, 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 do. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Let's go. Let's have a great day today. Let's go. Hey, let's go. You got to put it in. Energy level. Let's go. Come on, Lex. Starts with you. I got to keep it 100. Hey, we've got points on the board. We don't throw picks down here. You understand that? Hey, so if you're not sure if nothing's there, throw that suck away or tuck it and go. Hey, timing's good. You just got to get it up. That whole thing is a high catch, right? Nice catch. Hey, Plummer. Plummer, we got, hey, offense has no chance. You're in good position. Now they got first and goal. Be as tight as you can so you can bend. There you go. Good job, Alex. That's it right there. Here we go, baby. Come on, Ben Here we go. Come on, Ben Here we go. Eat it up. Eat it up. Eat it up. Clean out your dog bowl. Let's go. Hey, punt's different. Punt, you got to get under it. Kickoff, you should be moving forward when you catch it. You should never be stationary, right? It's like catching a fly ball and throwing the ball, throwing a guy out at third base, right? So don't just get, in, get there so you time it up. So I'm catching it and I'm moving as I go. Do it again. Do it again. Gone. I love it, though, man. I love it. He's bending balls in the air. He's going to catch it on time. Good job. There's a higher level of focus than I've seen in a long time. I want you to know we got a long way to go, and coaches are going to get after you and coach you hard. But we genuinely appreciate your ass right now. You understand that? Yeah. Keep the competitive edge. Keep the buy-in. Keep the focus. Stay engaged. You got that? Stay engaged. Let's kick ass the rest of the day. Let's come out tomorrow, be crazed dogs, and play a great physical brand of Rebel football. You got that? Rebels on me. Rebels on three. What? Two, three. Rebels. Rebels. You know, the game's different than when we were younger. Uh, just, you know, younger people uh, are different. You got the music now and uh, yeah. stuff like that. How much have you had to kind of change as you've moved through your coaching career with uh, how you handle practices to make sure that everything kind of is streamlined to keep them rolling? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think back when, when we were growing up and played ball, it's so different. I mean, you know, it, you know, we're trying to create toughness and that hard edge and all that, but you, you got one practice a day and you have walkthroughs. And I mean, it's good. It's player centered. And, and, I, and I like some of the changes. I think it's good. It, it'll help evolve the game. Players will play longer and stuff. But I mean, I remember triple days. You know, you come out in the morning with full pads and STs and special teams in the afternoon, and then another padded practice with shorts in the, in, in the night. And um, so you, you got to find other ways to really challenge them mentally, you know, and, and I think keeping them engaged. And they're such it's a multitasking generation. I mean, they're just so used to doing multiple things at once. So I think the music in the background helps keep their attention and also get you ready for game days where, where it's loud. A lot of transition going on in practices. We're never just going to have the same routine all the time. And you, you want to go from a special teams into a, a pod session into an individual and back to a special teams because that's how games flow. You know, they're pretty unpredictable. So I think we try to incorporate, you know, a, a fast paced practice practice that keeps the guys engaged and you know and it's uh, centered around learning. It, uh, 
It, uh, it looks good, though, the progress. We can see uh, certainly yeah. a lot of the progress. And the singing's not bad either. So well, i got to get better at that. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to wrap up the Reb Zone right after this. Stay with us. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. All right, here we go, Coach. USC, Saturday afternoon. Ready to get it? Yeah, we're excited. Can't wait to hear those Rebels. <laughs> All right, we're uh, looking forward to it. A reminder, that game is airing on the Pac-12 network, which is not on DirecTV, so make adjustments in where you're going to watch the game on Saturday if you're Direct TV, And make sure you come back for the Red Zone next Sunday. We're going to break it all down with you and look ahead to the home opener as well. That's a wrap for this one. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next Sunday. Good night. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie. Your home, your way.